What if you could know exactly what the balance in your checking account would be 3, 6, or even 12 months from now? Or what if you could plug the cost of something into your budget now and see if you'd still have enough money for all your expenses later on in the year? This video will show you exactly how to do that from scratch using Google Sheets with no experience necessary. Hey, welcome to the channel where I'm all about teaching you how to work smarter not harder using technology. If that sounds good to you or if you end up liking this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification for more videos just like this. Alright, so I'm inside of Google Sheets and as long as you have a Gmail account, you should be able to access Google Sheets by clicking on the honeycomb in the upper right hand corner and choosing Google Sheets. I'm going to open up a blank spreadsheet and we're going to walk through how to build this thing from scratch. No need to know anything whatsoever about spreadsheets. But my guess is that if you keep watching, you'll learn about budgeting and a little bit about spreadsheets along the way too. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is title my first sheet Final Tracker. Now if you decide you want to follow along as we do this, I would suggest titling your pages and your columns exactly how I title them. Because I'm going to be sharing some formulas in the description of the video below, which you'll be able to plug into your spreadsheets as we move along. But if your pages and columns aren't titled the way mine are, those formulas won't work unless you adjust them. Alright, so I'm going to start filling out the columns first. I'll title the first column Date. Then I'll make a column for Description. And this is where I'll describe what income I earned or exactly what I spent my money on, which is different than the category, which is what I'll title my next column. The category column will be where we categorize expenses into things like bills, entertainment, needs, and wants. Now I'll add a column titled Income. This is where I'll end up adding the money I earn. Next I'll add a column for Debits. This is where I'll end up adding anything considered an expense. Now I'm going to highlight all of column D and E and change all of these cells to Currency. This tutorial is going to be in US dollars, but this template should work for whatever currency you are using. Next, I'll change column A to the date format that I like by highlighting all of column A, and then from the Format tab, I'll hover over Number, and then choose Date. So the next thing I'm going to do is make this a little bit more pretty. I'll start by highlighting columns A through F. Now from the Format tab, I can click on Alternating Colors. Now I know I said at the beginning that you should try to do everything the same as me to make things work, but this is one of those spaces where you get to make up your own mind. I like to use green, but you can choose any color you like. Once you have the formatting set up the way you like it, we'll move on to the next step. That's the other thing that I'll say. If at any time you feel like I'm moving too fast, feel free to hit the pause button. I'll be waiting for you once you hit play again and we'll get you all caught up. Anyhow, now we can right click on the sheet at the bottom and click on Duplicate. Now we are going to rename the sheet we just created to Income. Next, I'll add a column titled Complete. I'll use this to remind myself whether the income or expense has already hit my checking account. I'm going to make an adjustment to this column and add checkboxes to the entire column by highlighting the entire column and then holding the Control key and clicking on F1 to deselect that one cell. Now from the Insert tab, I'm going to click Insert Checkbox. A checkmark allows you to add or remove a checkmark from that box. It'll make a little more sense later, I promise. Next, we'll make another duplicate, and we'll call this one Fixed Expenses. This is where we'll add payments like mortgage, rent, or Netflix, which stay the same each month. Next, I'm going to add some drop-down lists in the category, which we'll use later. To do that, I'm going to create another page titled Lists. Column A of the List page is where I'm going to type out all the categories I want to end up tracking. This is another space where you can use whatever categories you want to use and it isn't going to mess up the formulas that I put down in the description. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use mortgage, groceries, gas, household needs, household bills, needs, household bills, wants, student loans, kids activities, tithing, charitable giving, and transfer. Now I can go back to the fixed expenses page and add my drop downs. I do that by selecting all of column C, hitting the control key, and deselecting the header row. From there I'm going to click on the data tab and choose data validation. From there I'll ensure that the criteria is set to list from range, and now I just need to tell Google Sheets what range of cells will be included in my drop down menu. So by clicking the little square box, Google Sheets will now open a dialog box that allows you to simply click on the lists sheet and highlight the cells that you want to include in your drop down lists. I'm going to highlight a few extra in case I want to go back and add a category I might have forgot about. Now I can just click on OK and Save. Now if you click back on the Fixed Expenses page, you'll be able to see that you have a drop down lists in all of column C. OK, so we're going to duplicate this sheet one more time and title this next one Other Expenses. 
This is where we'll add things that we aren't necessarily planning on on a monthly basis. It might be things like ordering food or an unexpected repair that might come up. Since we work smarter and not harder, you should already have the drop down lists in column C of this page. So now we might go back to our categories and add something like eating out. Then when you go back to your other expenses page, it'll show up in the category drop down lists. Okay, so this is where we start adding our actual income and fixed expenses. I must warn you, this is the most time consuming part of putting this budget together, but I promise you it's worth it when it's all done. This will all come together in a really nice, clean, easy to read budget plan that will work for you and your family. I promise. The good news is you are getting your tutorial from someone that prides himself in working smarter and not harder. This probably won't even take long at all. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to start with adding my planned income. Let's say for the purpose of this tutorial that I get paid on a bi-weekly basis. This is where we can make Google Sheets do the work for us. The cool thing is, is I only need to add the first two paychecks and then I can have Google Sheets do the rest. Check this out. I'll add 1-3-2020 to cell A2. Then I'll add 1-17-2020, which adds up to 14 days later in A3. I'll add paycheck 1 to the description and we'll ensure that the category is listed as income. Let's say I get paid $1,000 on a bi-weekly basis. Now I should be able to highlight from A2 through D2 and then drag this down until I get to the end of the year. Do you notice how Google Sheets does the math for me on the dates? That's pretty cool. Alright, I'm actually going to do the same thing for my wife's income. It just so happens that she gets paid on the same bi-weekly pattern as me and she makes the same exact amount as me each paycheck too. So I'm actually going to copy this whole thing and paste it right below my paycheck. Now the only thing I need to do is change the name of her paycheck by changing the first cell and then dragging it down. Now if I'd like to sort this by oldest date to latest date, I can do that by clicking in the very upper left hand corner of the sheet or by hitting Ctrl A to select all and then clicking sort range from the data tab. From there, just ensure to check the box that says your data has headers. Now you can choose to sort the date column from A to Z and that should sort your dates from oldest to newest. Now I'm going to add my fixed expenses. And just because I know your attention span might be getting short, I'll just add the first one and then fast forward. So let's say I have to pay my mortgage on the first of every month. I'm going to follow the same concept that I use for my income. I'll add January 1st in cell A2. Then I'll add February 1st in A3. Then I'll add mortgage payment in each of the first two cells in my description column. Then I'll change the category to mortgage. Now since this is a debit and not an income, I need to ensure that I add the cost to the debits column. Let's say that my mortgage is $1,100 a month. Now I should be able to drag these two rows down just like I did before until I get to the end of the year. I'll continue to follow the same practice for all my fixed expenses. You may even have one or two expenses that are quarterly. That's okay, just like monthly or bi-weekly. So this is where I'll fast forward and won't bore you with adding all of my expenses. Okay, thanks for hanging in there for that. I do want to chat about one of the expenses that I consider a fixed expense. We put almost all of our groceries, gas, and other household needs on our credit card each month so we can get rewards at the end of the month. I also feel like it makes it easier to budget it as a fixed expense each month too. So I'm going to budget $1,200 a month at the end of the month to pay for all my groceries, gas, and household needs. This is really me just saying I want to plan $1,200 a month for anything that isn't necessarily a fixed expense. This way I know it gives me about $200 a week for groceries, about $50 a week for gas, and about $200 a month for anything else I want to spend it on, like fun or entertainment. Now I want to be clear, if you are of the mindset or have gotten other advice that says you shouldn't have a credit card, I'm not at all telling you that you should have a credit card. I'm just saying this is what works for my family. Alright, now that I have all of my fixed expenses, I'm going to sort these by date as well. I'm going to do one more thing and then I promise we'll start putting this together so you won't have to do any more work. Google Sheets will do the work for you for the rest of the year. I'm just going to add a random expense to the other expenses page so that we know the next steps we take are working. Let's say that on January 3rd we're going to have to pay $50 to cover my fantasy football draft. I don't have a category that I like for this one so I'm going to go back to the list page and add one called fun. Now back on the other expenses page I'm going to choose that from the drop down categories. And since this is an expense, I need to put it in the debits category. Just remember that you can sort this page oldest to newest at any time. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. In the final tracker page, I'm going to start to build a formula which, in the end, will do a few things. 
It will put all my income, my fixed expenses, and other expenses into one page. It'll also sort by date. Here's where I want to throw in a quick disclaimer. I'm going to go through this pretty fast because I've already done a video on the query function which I'll link at the top of this video. However, I do have a cheat code for you. Remember how I said that if you named all your sheets and columns exactly like I did, you could get the formulas I used in the description below? Well, if you search for step one in the description below, you should be able to copy and paste the exact formula I'm about to go over into your spreadsheet. Before I start that query, I'm going to use the first row for starting balance. This is the exact amount I have in my checking account right now. Let's say I'm starting out with $3,000. I would put that in the income column. Now in cell A3, I'm going to start by typing equals query and then an opening parentheses. Now I'll just grab column A through E from the income sheet. Then I'll add a comma and inside of quotes, I'll type select star for everything and then add a space and type where not A for column A is null and add a quote, then a comma, then a zero to say we are not bringing a header over. Now you should notice that it brought everything over from the income tab. Now I know that was fast, but again, remember you'll be able to just copy and paste the formula from the description. Now I want to add the fixed expenses to this page. I do that by adding a pointed parentheses after the first parentheses and after my first data set. Now I add a semicolon and choose my data as column A through E on the fixed expenses page. Now, since I'm querying two sets of data, I need to change column A to column one. I'm not exactly sure why Google Sheets requires that. You'll now notice that if I scroll down, I'll now see all of the fixed expenses added there. Now you might be thinking that the dates are all out of order. Don't worry, we'll fix that in a bit. First, I wanna add my other expenses to this query. I'll do it the same way I just added fixed expenses. I'll add another semicolon and choosing A through E from the other expenses page. Again, if you scroll down, you should see that that one transaction added. The last step in the query is to sort the items by date. I do that by adding a space after the word NULL and typing in all caps ORDER and then by column 1 and ASC for ascending. Now you'll notice that everything is sorted oldest date to latest date. Now we are ready to start doing some really cool stuff that will hopefully blow your mind. We are going to add some features to the final tracker sheet that should allow us to both plan for the future and go back and look at historical income and spending. The first thing I want to do is add a running balance. I'll do that by typing running balance in F1. That should automatically add that entire column to the table. From there, I'm going to create two formulas in column F. As I create these formulas, and these are much shorter, mind you, you can still grab them from the description if you look for step two in the description. In F2, I'm going to type equals D2 so that it brings the starting balance over. Now I'm going to make a formula that will make a running balance and then copy it down the rest of column F. I'll do that by typing equals F2 plus D3 minus E3. I'm essentially saying that I want to take the last balance and add any income and subtract any debits from this row. Now I can click on F3 and hit Control C to copy the formula. Then I can highlight all of column F and then by holding the control key and then deselecting the header row and the initial balance cell, I can hit control V to copy this formula all the way down the row. And now I have a running balance. Now I'm going to add some conditional formatting to this row to let me know if my balance will ever go below $500 at any point the rest of the year. If so, I may need to make some adjustments. I do that by highlighting all of column F and deselecting the header row again. From there, I'm going to click on the Format tab and then on Conditional Formatting. The first thing you'll know is that the conditional formatting I'm going to apply is for all of column F. Now I need to set the rule. I'm going to choose the Less Than rule from the dropdown. In the Value field, I'll put 500 as in $500. Now I'll choose a red background and white font. This means that anytime there is a balance under $500, the cell will turn red. That makes it really easy for me to pick out a negative balance or a balance that's under $500. So far it looks like I'm doing pretty good. Let's test this budget plan out. I'm sitting here wanting to know if I can buy myself a toy. I've been searching the internet for a boat and right now there's one that I really like for about $5,500. I'm wondering if I could buy the boat in May. I'm going to plug that into other expenses in May. Now that we have this plugged in, let's go see if this is going to cause me a problem down the road. 
It looks like if I buy my boat in May, it may cause me some problems, as I'll go in the negative on July 1st when my mortgage payment comes out. Looks like I might have to wait a little bit longer to buy the boat. If I change it up and say I would like to buy it in August, let's see how that works out. Looks like I'll be sitting much better if I wait until August. It doesn't go into the negative anywhere. Looks like I'll still even have over $3,000 left at the end of the year. So even after planning for all these things like tithing, gas, groceries, household needs, a little bit of fun, and even a boat, I'm still showing that I have about $3,400 left at the end of the year. I would recommend building some savings into your budget plan. Now that we know how plugging items into your budget will tell you whether or not you can spend money, it might tempt you to spend more money. So I'm actually going to build some savings into my budget. And actually, I'm a huge proponent of saving as much money as I can. So I'm going to remove the boat purchase, which will allow me to save even more money. I can tell you that if you live by the principle that every dollar has its own name when you're making your budget, you'll be better off down the road and you'll spend less spontaneously. So after removing the boat purchase, I now almost have $9,000 to put away into savings. Obviously, most people don't have the money to just move over to the savings account right now. So we're going to plan for it by adding a bi-weekly transfer to the savings account to the fixed expenses on the same dates as my paychecks. I'll do that by adding 1-3 and 1-17 as the dates, and I'll drag that down to the end of the year. Then I'll add transfer to the savings as the description. Pick transfer as the category and drag that all the way down. Now I have to decide how much money I can transfer over to savings on a bi-weekly basis. That should be pretty simple. Since I'm showing that I have almost $9,000 at the end of the year, I'm going to leave a little bit for cushion and plan on transferring about $8,500 over to savings account over the period of the year. So I can decide how much per pay period by dividing $8,500 by 26 since there are 26 pay periods in the year. That comes to about $325 per pay period, so I'm going to put $325. Now I have to go back and look to see if there are any areas that might go negative by doing this. Looks like I may run into a little bit of a snag in November, so I'll just change the amount I save in November to $200 per pay period instead of $325. Now I should be good, and I even have a little bit of money as cushion in case I made a mistake somewhere or forgot an expense I might have. It feels good to have a plan for the rest of the year. I have just one more suggestion that will make your budget a living document for the rest of the year. I would suggest keeping up with the expenses on a weekly basis. I'd pick a day of the week to pull up your online banking and match expenses to what you have in your budget. For instance, let's say that my first paycheck came into my checking account. Since it is accounted for on my online banking, I might check this as a complete on the income tab. Or we can move over to the fixed expenses page and mark off any expenses that have been taken out of my checking account already. I've paid my mortgage and I've tithed but I noticed that my phone bill was $153 instead of $150. In order to keep this budget a living document, I'm going to adjust that amount so that it updates my running balance for the rest of the year on the final tracker page. You're also going to want to ensure that there aren't any unaccounted for expenses on your online banking. If there are, you're going to want to add them to your other expenses page so that too will update your running balance on the final tracker sheet. As you add expenses, you always want to go back and ensure this won't cause a negative balance down the road. If it does, you may need to make some adjustments in other areas. If you got value from this video, please hit the like button because it helps the YouTube algorithm. If you aren't already subscribed, you'll want to do that and hit the bell notification too because this is part one of a two-part series. In part two, coming up next week, I'm going to show you how to turn your Google Sheets budget into an awesome automated report like this one which will summarize your previous and future income streams, categorize your spending habits, show you what your negative spending trends are, and show you how you are trending in each category or specific expense. The best part is, is that you don't need any experience for this either. I'll walk you through how to do it in about 20 minutes. See you next week.